Welcome to PG Casts, a production of HashRocket. My name is Josh Branchon. In this episode, we're going to be looking at some considerations we need to make when working with case and sensitive data. A good example of data that we may want to treat as case insensitive are user emails. If our user is trying to log in to our application with their email address, it shouldn't matter if they use all caps or all lowercase when typing their email. We should recognize them either way. So we already have a users table with a bunch of records. So let's take a look at the description of that users table. You can see we have an ID and an email field, and there's a unique constraint on the email field. Now, like I said, we have a bunch of data. We have 10,000 records, actually. And to get an idea of what those records look like, we'll do a limited selection. Great, we can see we have a bunch of unique email addresses. So back to the scenario of looking up the record for a user that is trying to log in. Let's say they happen to capitalize the first letter of their email. In this scenario, we aren't going to be able to find their record. See, we get zero rows back. So to fix that, let's wrap everything in the lower function to make sure that we always get a consistent comparison of the emails. Now that time, we found the record we were looking for. This seems fine, but we've introduced a bit of a catch. We're no longer taking advantage of the index on our email column. And we can see that that's the case by doing an explain analyze on the previous query. So we'll jump to the front here and add explain analyze. And we can see that Postgres is doing a sequential scan on the user's table. Now the reason for this is because our one index on the email column is just for the email on its own. We need a different index if we're going to be querying the email column frequently in conjunction with the lower function. So let's add one. We'll call it lower email index. And we just specify that it's using the lower function with email. And we've created our index. And we can ensure that that's there by looking at the description of our users table again. And there we have it. So let's try that select query from earlier again and see if we now get the benefits of our index. We can see now that an actual index scan is happening. And because of this, the execution time is down to 0.07 milliseconds as opposed to the 7 milliseconds with our full sequential scan. Now this is obviously considerably faster. Uh, the only potential caveat is that the uh, writes to this table are going to be a tad slower because we're also having to update the in this extra index. Um, but I think the benefits definitely outweigh the costs. Uh, the lesson learned here is to always be cognizant of how you most often access your data to ensure that you aren't missing out on the benefits of an index. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.